Hey, what's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. I want to thank all my new subscribers. I've been getting quite a few um, out of nowhere. And uh, thank you all for joining us. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, today's topic is going to be fertilizers, uh, liquid fertilizers for your planted aquarium. And uh, I've tried them all. Uh, so I'm going to talk about all the ones that I've tried. And there will be a lot of YouTubers that will say this is the best or you should use this one or et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, all, it all comes down to what kind of tank setup you have because they're all good. It just depends on what you have going on in your tank. Uh, so all plants need macro and micronutrients. Macro is the nutrients they need in mass quantities, uh, like nitrogen, uh, potassium, iron, magnesium, uh, manganese, and then uh, micro being the small amounts, uh, being uh, boron, copper, cobalt, zinc, uh, etc. So I have several here I'm going to show you. There are two that I don't have anymore. I'll throw pictures up, but I know what's in them and I'll talk about them. Uh, so the first one we'll talk about is uh, Fluval. Now, um, they only sell these tiny bottles, but it's super high concentrate. Um, a cap of this is actually meant for a 60-gallon tank. So if you have anything smaller than a 60-gallon, you got to do some math on how much you pull out of there. Because, yes, putting too many uh, liquid ferts in your tank is going to cause some issues. Um so if you got a 60 gallon or larger, this one's great. It's just one cap full once a week. And this is loaded with a lot of uh, iron. Um, it does have a tiny bit of nitrogen, not much. Plants really want a lot of nitrogen. So it, it depends. If you've got a dirted tank, they're gonna get lots of nitrogen from your uh, soil and dirt. Your rooted plants will in, anyway. Uh, that's why I love uh, dirt so much. It provides, you know, depending on what type of organic soil you get, um, it could have anywhere from 10% to 30% nitrogen and, and potassium, which plants just love the heck out of that. But uh, th So if you've got something like that going on, this is great just for the, col for the column. Uh, you'll get loads of nitrogen. It's uh, 0.65, I'm sorry, not nitrogen, iron. 0.65 in um, iron, which is a lot, and, and then it provides the micronutrients, boron, copper, manganese, uh, and zinc, and a small amount of potassium, very small, 0.1%, which is kind of negligible. But um, I, I do like this because of the amount of uh, iron uh, that it has. So if I have a tank, I use dirt in all my tanks, but if I have a tank loaded with rhizome plants, I'll use this or I'll use... Um, which I'm out of right now, API, I'll put a picture of it. API leaf zone only has iron and potassium in it, okay? Um, and there are some who think that that is a terrible fertilizer because that's all it provides. Well, depending on what kind of substrate you have, that's all you may need is to add iron and potassium, and they're going to get a lot of the nitrogen that they need from the nitrates that are happening from the fish waste, etc., you know, um, so uh, I find it great. Like I said, it just depends on your substrate. If you got a substrate that's providing lots and lots and lots of nutrients, like a, a fluval stratum or um, uh, ADA, that has those substrates have everything, and they're constantly leaching all of that stuff into the water column. You shouldn't be dosing anything because it's constantly releasing that stuff into the water column. Now, once a year, it'll deplete, and you've got to add root tabs to recharge those types of substrates or liquid ferts to recharge them. But in general, like Fluval uh, and uh, ADA, which are little dirt pellets, they, they're loaded with everything. Um, so, Flourish. This is actually my least favorite, and it's one of the most popular. It has everything, but it is... It is so negligible in the amount of um, nutrients that it provides. It's almost worthless. I mean, nitrogen is 0.07. I, I mean, it's not even a percent. Uh, uh, potassium, which is a, a macro, it provides only 0.01%. So the macronutrients, the stuff that plants need the most of, it has virtually none. 
Um, it does have kind of a high about amount of calcium and magnesium, but you get that stuff out of your tap water. You know, you should have some kind of general hardness in your tap water already. Or if you use buffers, you're getting calcium and magnesium from the aragonite or crushed coral. So you don't need those. Um, and then negligible amount of cobalt and copper. Copper is 0 0.000001. That's nothing. I bet if I sneezed, I would blow out more copper than that. Um, you know, and then iron too, 0.32%. Um, that's that's the one that it has the highest. But everything else, the zinc and the manganese and all of that are all like the manganese is even the worst. Point zero 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 one 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 eight. Terrible stuff. I bought this a long time ago. I quit using it because I realized that it's not doing anything. I mean, even if you have a pebble substrate that provides nothing, this isn't the type of fertilizer you'd want. So let's say you do have a pebble substrate. Um, I'm going to recommend uh, two uh, liquid ferts that will benefit you uh, if you're doing a rock substrate. Well, one, if you have rooted plants, you're going to want some type of root tabs, um, you know, from whatever company. But what really helps is Easy Green. Um, Easy Green by Aquarium Co-op, uh, they, they know that plants really need lots of nitrogen. So their nitrogen level in here is 2.66. That's really good. You know, you do a couple dosages of this and it'll last, a, you know, a week or so. And they're phosphates um, and potash, 9%, uh, magnesium, 0.7, uh, boron, the um, stuff that's the micronutrients are all on the lower spectrums, but like the iron is 0.13%. But they, they mostly focus on the potassium and nitrogen, which is great. So, um... It, or if you're using an inert, an inert substrate like uh, uh, fluorite or um, EcoComplete, both of those substrates, they are inert. They do not dissolve anything into the water column, but they actually provide all the elements that rooted plants need, but not what rhizome plants need. The rhizome plants will get nothing. So you'll need a liquid fert like this is perfect. Now, uh, they also do sell... If, you, if this isn't enough iron, but you've got a lot of red plants, you can get just the iron. And the amount of iron in this is, it's a lot, um, uh, 0.26 per pump. So, um, good amount of iron. Now, Thrive. I don't have any of that right now. I have used it in the past. I'm going to post a picture of it. I'm going to give you a warning with Thrive. Now, Thrive is known for, hold on a second, I'm going to have a sip of my beverage. Thrive is known in the hobby for being used in high-tech aquariums. In high-tech uh, aquariums um, have CO2 injections. And because of this, the amount of, of nutrients they provide is through the roof. Because when you do a CO2 tank, you're dumping a bunch of CO2 in there and you need, you need your um, uh, fertilizers through the roof also and your lights as bright as possible. You're giving your plants everything to the max. But it... Thrive can also be used in a low-tech uh, system. So I do only low-tech, so I'm going to give you some advice. I'll throw up a picture of Thrive. All right, If you use it in a low-tech tank, only use it for the first few months that you have plants in it without any fish. You can't, do not use it with fish, and I'll tell you why. The amount of nitrogen it has in there is, uh, is a lot. Uh, it's well over 3%. And when you squirt a dose of it in there, <coughs> it's going to send your nitrites through the roof, which are lethal to, you know, fish, and it can kill your fish. So in a low-tech tank, Thrive is great while you're getting your plants going, but once you want to start putting animals in there, stop using the Thrive and move on to something else, you know, so... Uh, if you have any questions about any of these fertilizers, because I, I didn't really say not to use any of them except for Flourish. Don't use Flourish. It has, it doesn't have a single element in here that is substantially beneficial, unless you just want to overdose the heck out of your tank. And look at the top; it's green. So you dump it in the tank, and your water turns green. So 
it's ugly too. The rest of them all have great uses. It just depends on your substrate. Now, I will also put uh, links to all these uh, fertilizers in the description. No, I am not sponsored by any of these people. I just like to help and make it easy for you. Uh, I'm really great at finding the best price. Unfortunately, Aquarium Co-op, the only way you can get theirs is you got to go through their website, set up an account, and all of that. But all the rest of them, uh, liquid ferts can all be found through links that uh, I'll be providing for you. Uh, in my dirted tanks, I actually don't need fertilizers at all anymore. Once there's animals in there, I stop with the liquid ferts altogether because the dirt provides everything that my rooted plants need. And then my animals, their waste, you know, whatever food I'm giving them, will create uh, nitrates, the nitrogen that rhizome plants need. And then whatever else is in your food that you feed your plants whenever they, um, you know, excrete it, it's going to have those elements. So if you feed them food with lots of uh, potassium and calcium and all of those things, that will be released along with the uh, nitrogen into the water column um, through their waste. So, and once I've got a well-established tank, there we are. I'm, do I'm done with the ferts. Now, with root tabs, root tabs are expensive. I use Osmocote. I can tell you right now, do not use Osmocote unless you have a blasting sand or pool filter sand substrate or a dirted substrate. Okay, that's with actual dirt. If you put this stuff, because it's high powered, you put this stuff as a root tab in a pebble substrate, uh, it's going to poison the heck out of your water because the nitrogen on here is, is ridiculous. Uh, but I've tested it every way imaginable. It is only toxic if you try to use it in anything other than blasting sand or dirt, and you need to stick it all the way to the bottom. If you do not, if you use a pebble or rock substrate, yeah, you're going to have to buy the expensive Seachum root tabs or API root tabs or or what have you and uh, I'll put links to those in, in there uh, as well but I hope you found today's subject helpful if you did not I don't know what to tell you thanks for watching and uh, I guess thanks for wasting 12 minutes of your life to make it this far um, but for the rest of you I appreciate you taking the time to watch and learn uh, if you're having a bad day you're feeling down in the dumps I'd like to encourage you, get up, do something about it. Don't sit there in that dark spot dwelling on things that negativity. I've been there. All right? Aquascaping helped pull me out of it. My kids helped pull me out of it. My dog helps pull me out of it. Okay? So when that stuff starts happening, get up and do something. At the very least, get up and take a shower. That'll, that'll get it going to get you out of that spiral. So, thank you so much to everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, we'll catch you next time.